a very good morning to all of you i am dr monica sharma working as assistant professor in the department of physics deshbandhu college university of delhi i would like to welcome all of you to this new refresher course on physics today we are going to discuss about the magnetization dynamics in one dimensional nanostructures the content of today's presentation will include topics like what are the background of nanomaterials what we understand by magnetic materials and magnetization dynamics the synthesis techniques uh, which are used to deposit these uh, nanostructures such as top down approach and bottom up approach um, then we will discuss in detail about the one dimensional nanostructures and electro deposition technique which is used for depositing these one dimensional nanostructures such as nano wires then we will discuss various characterization techniques used to understand the physical properties of these one dimensional nanostructures such as structural properties morphological properties the magnetic properties which will include the dc magnetic properties and ac magnetic properties and then we will further discuss different microwave devices which can be utilized or designed using these one dimensional nanostructures uh, we will also discuss in detail uh, the future applications of these materials sometimes uh, i stuck into uh, many questions when i think about how do strain resistant material work how do electronics keep getting smaller and is it possible for cancer patients not to have side effects so when i keep on thinking uh, about the answer of these questions using my uh, thinking cap uh the answer which comes into my mind is the nanotechnology makes it possible so nanotechnology so what is this nanotechnology is so nano we all know that nano means 10 to the power minus 9 so uh, nano science is the study of phenomena and manipulation of materials at atomic scale molecular and macromolecular scales where properties differ significantly from their a uh, large scale or their bulk parts so nanotechnology deals with the investigation and use of such nano scale materials a nanometer is 1000 millionth of a meter as we said already so you can see the uh, in this picture so uh, if i see the grain of a sand that has the dimensions of around 1 mm when we further reduce the size and if i see the diameter of a human hair that will be of the order of 150 micrometer and uh, further reducing the red blood cells have the dimensions of the order of 10 micrometer when we keep on decreasing the size of uh, the structures or the materials uh, we all we are now aware of many materials such as transistors which are used in electronic devices and they are fabricated by integrated circuit technology having dimensions less than 35 nanometer further reducing we can see that the proteins have the dimensions of the order of 10 to the power uh, 10 nanometer or 10 to the power 1 nanometer the carbon nanotubes have a diameter uh, of the order of 5 to 10 nanometer but the reducing the size um, if i keep on reducing we can see that we can visualize the diameter of the dna is of the order of 1 nanometer and um 1/10th of this uh, uh, 1 nanometer will be 0.1 nanometer and if i go to that scale we can visualize the atomic uh, molecules such as hydrogen atom so uh, when i go from 1 mm to 0.1 nanometer so we can see that uh, now we are able to visualize all these materials and we can use the uh, these materials for various uh, applications the same uh, image can be visualized microscopically using the scanning electron microscope technique so if you see the ant has a 
length of around 5 mm the small end has a uh, length of around 5 mm and if i reduce the size and if i see the eye of a fruit fly so they it has the dimensions of the order of 400 micrometer so this scale shows the uh, length from uh, this particular is 100 micrometer so this uh, eye has a dimensions of, of the order of four times this 100 micrometer. So around 400 micrometer will be the length of this eye of a fruit fly. Further reducing the size, uh, as we already mentioned that the red blood cells are of the order of 10 micrometers. So you can see that this red blood cell has a dimensions of the order of say 5 uh, to uh, 8 micrometer. The viruses um, are even more smaller and they have the dimensions of around 40 to 50 nanometer. So this scale shows the dimensions of around uh, uh, 0.100 nanometer. So it can include around two viruses. So they one will have a diameter of around 50 nanometer. Um, the carbon nanotubes are even more smaller, as uh, already said, and they have the diam 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 diameter of around 10 nanometers. So single carbon nanotubes, so this shows the example of a multi-walled carbon nanotubes. So the next question is, uh, what are the nanostructures? Okay, we said that the materials which are at the 10 to the power minus 9 scale are nanomaterials. But how we can classify these nanomaterials? So we can classify all these nanomaterials into different categories depending upon uh, what is their size and their shape. So the materials uh, having at least one dimensions in nanometric scale are called nanomaterials. Uh, so suppose if one of the material has all the dimensions in nanoscale, so they comes into the category of zero dimension or zero D materials. So zero D materials are those uh, whose uh, uh, all dimensions will be confined to the nanoscale. So these materials have a diameter, nanoscale means they will have the diameter less than 10, 100 nanometer and denoted they have the categories like nanoparticles and nanoclusters. One of the well-known example of uh, 0D material is the fullerene or C60, carbon 16. In, uh, it was, uh, uh, it was uh, uh, obtained or it was uh, uh, um, materialized in uh, 1996, uh, 1996 and the Nobel Prize was given in chemistry to Richard Samley, Robert Curl and Sir Harlow for this discovery. It contains alternating six and five membered rings of sp2 hybridized carbon atoms. So the next category of nanostructures is 1D materials which have two dimensions in the nanoscale, whereas the one dimension will be uh, elongated in the micron scale or millimeter scale. So you can see such kind of materials include nanotubes, nanowires, nanorods, nanofibers, where two of the dimensions of these, the X and Y plane will be in the nano meter scale, whereas the Z plane is elongated in the micron scale. So the example, well-known example for the 1D materials is the carbon nanotube. So the 1D materials or the nanostructures have many applications in electronics, biomedicines, microwave devices, which we will discuss in detail in ahead slices. The nanotubes, if I say, they will have the hollow structures and their thickness will of the order of around less than 15 nanometer. Nano rods have uh, nanometer dimensions, diameter. So their dimension will be very um, in the X and Y dimensions will be in the nanometer scale. But the Z dimension will not be elongated much, but it will be very small, say 0.5 micrometer to 1 micrometer. Whereas when I talk about the wires, they will have X and Y in the nanometer scale, but the length will be uh, very huge or very large in the micron scale, which is uh, more than uh, 100 micron. So uh, these are the one uh, dimensional materials. 
The next category of nanostructures can be classified as 2D materials, where we confined one of the dimensions in the nanoscale. The rest two dimensions can be in the millimeter scale or micrometer scale. So the examples of these are thin films, nano sheets, nano disc. And one of the well-known example is the graphene sheets. Or graphene is basically the atomic uh, level arrangement of carbon atoms whose are elongated in another x and y direction. So z dimension will be another nanometer scale, but x and y are elongated in the uh, micron scale. So graphene sheets are the examples of 2D materials. The last category which we can classify as the 3D materials where no dimensions are in the nanoscale. So the bulk materials are usually come in this category. So 3D materials, um, they have larger dimensions. The examples include nano balls, cones, nano pillars, nano flowers, etc. Um, one thing, uh, if you can um, say, if you have one graphene sheet and if you make a stack of all these graphene sheets, you will land up on a graphite, which is an example of uh, 3D materials. So these 3D materials have many applications in catalysis, magnetic materials and electrodes due to higher surface area and supply enough absorption sites for all involved molecules in a small space. So these nanomaterials are interesting because at the small scale, materials have different prop uh, uh, different properties than the uh, than at the bulk due to increased surface area to volume ratio. Another uh, thing which we should mention here that we land up on the quantum confinement, which makes these nanomaterials uh, more interesting at the nanoscale. The increased interaction and reactivity is one of the byproducts of materials that are nanoscale, which means potentially using less of the material and that even on the nanoscale, the properties are so utterly different from that of the bulk scale. The physical properties changes drastically, such as a lower melting point and the difference will be larger than the thousand degrees reduced lattice constraints, band gap broadening. So se semiconductors can become insulators when we go from the uh, micron scale or the bulk to the nanometer scale. They exhibit uh, excellent catalytic properties. Their mechanical properties such as an adhesion can be enhanced. Uh, as I said, the band gap broadening. So you can see here some of the examples like the silver and gold nanoparticles, uh, there when we reduce the size, their optical properties changes. So you can visualize the optical properties like a hundred nanometer silver uh, nanoparticle is looks like red in color, whereas a uh, one uh, 20 nanometer silver sphere looks like um, whereas a uh, it looks like uh, yellowish in color 80 nanometer looks like a little uh, bluish light bluish in color and 40 nanometer will look like uh, yellowish in color similarly for gold spheres if you see the gold sphere of 100 nanometer will be orange in color whereas 50 nanometer gold sphere will have a different colors so their optical properties changes a lot so the wavelength region in which they will operate that will change so uh, when we reduce from the bulk part to the nanometer scale their uh, physical properties uh, such as electrical magnetic uh, optical properties changes drastically now let us uh, discuss about the magnetic materials um, so we all know that the magnetic materials can be classified as diamagnetic materials, paramagnetic materials, and ferromagnetic materials, depending upon how they align the magnetic moments in the presence of magnetic field. Uh, in the paramagnetic materials, the magnetic moments are randomly oriented in the absence of external magnetic field. When we apply some field, the magnetic moments align in the direction of the field and when we remove the field again they come back to their 
original position. So you can see the MH loop. So when uh, we apply the magnetic field, the movements will try to align along the direction of the field. But when we remove, they come back to their zero position. Whereas for the ferromagnetic materials, this is not the case. Ferromagnetic movements, uh, uh, their movements are, uh, magnetic movements are randomly uh, aligned, but they are aligned in specific domains. So uh, even uh, when we apply the magnetic field, the, these domains, they are like small regions which are working as a, uh, permanent magnet. They are working as a specific magnet. So when we apply the magnetic field, all these permanent magnets or all these regions will align themselves in the direction of the magnetic field. But when we remove, uh, they have the tendency to keep that magnetic movement. And uh, that's why when we reduce H again to zero, we will not land up on the zero, but we will land up on a remnant state. That means they have a specific region. So this thing can be analyzed for the ferromagnetic materials using the hysteresis loop. So hysteresis loop uh, explains the behavior of the magnetic material with the application of how the magnetization changes with the application of external magnetic field. So can be seen that when when all the movements are saturated uh, along the magnetic direction. So all these movements are saturated in the direction of magnetic field. So this is saturation magnetization. When we reduce the magnetic field once again, it don't land up on the zero position or it will not land up in, into its original position, but it will have some remnant present uh, due the their, the moments will have some remnants that means you can determine the remnant magnetization to demagnetize all those magnetic moments to its original position or to the zero we have to apply some external field which is known as the corrosive field and uh, further reducing it goes to the uh, opposite direction and then it comes back again so we can discuss in detail about the these magnetic materials. So diamagnetic materials are those materials uh, which shows the property and it is the property of all materials in response to an applied magnetic field and hence there is no requirement for all the atoms to have net magnetic movement. Uh, this is a weak negative magnetic effect which has a susceptibility of the order of 10 to the power minus 5 and hence may be masked by the presence of stronger effects like ferromagnetism, even though it is still present. A simplified understanding of the diamagnetic effect is based on Lenz law applied at the atomic scale. Lenz law state that change in magnetic field will induce a current in a loop of electrical conductor, which will tend to oppose the applied magnetic field. As the electron velocity is a function of the energy of the electronic state, the diamagnetic susceptibility is essentially independent of temperature. A diamagnet tends to exclude lines of force from the material. A superconductor under some condition is a perfect diamagnet and it excludes all magnetic lines of force. Closed shell electronic configuration leads to a net zero magnetic movement Spin and orbital movements are oriented to cancel out each other. Monoatomic noble gases, for example, helium, neon, argon, krypton, etc. are diamagnetic. In polyatomic gases, for example, hydrogen and nitrogen, the formation of the molecules lead to a closed electronic shell configuration and thus making these gases diamagnetic. Many iconically ionically bonded um, sodium chloride, magnesium chloride, etc. and covalently bonded carbon, diamond, germanium, silicon materials also lead to a closed shell configuration, thus making diamagnetism as the predominant magnetic effect. Most organic compounds involving other types of bonds as well are diamagnetic. So the next category is paramagnetic materials. There are two distinct types of paramagnetism. 
that arising when the atom or molecule has 